Let's pay close attention. This might be one of the most important money lessons that you ever learn, both with the example that I do and with the task that I set before you. We're going to talk about the power of compounding interest. I'm going to show you an example of how this works with paying off a credit card bill. We have a fictional credit card company, Arcane Credit. They have a 24% APR, meaning annual percentage rate. That translates to, not exactly, because the numbers don't work exactly like this, but we can think of it as 2% monthly percent rate, meaning that any balance that you leave on the credit card at the end of the month, they're going to tack on an extra 2% that you will owe to them. We're going to look at buying an item for $541.38. And they send us a bill and say, minimum payment, 30 bucks. You need to pay 30 bucks by the end of the month or you get hit with a heavy financial penalty. We're going to pay this minimum payment, 30 bucks, each month until I have the total paid off. We've looked at using spreadsheets to do calculations before. Let's look again at how I could do this. I'm going to put in numbers for my month of the year. One trick that I use, if I, if I want to put a list of numbers in order, I can use a formula equals this number plus one. And then if you remember, I could copy and paste that formula right and it'll say it'll always say take the box above me this is what this formula says take the box above me and add one to it all right so I can have a whole bunch of numbers all in a row I don't know if I'm gonna need them all but there we are our balance is starting out if you remember as five hundred forty one dollars and thirty eight cents so that's gonna be our starting balance and then we're going to be making a minimum payment, so we're going to be paying $30. After I pay my 30 bucks, what remains, that's going to be 541 minus 30. Remember, if you want the spreadsheet to do math for you, you got to start with an equal sign. That's what will remain at the end of the month. $511.38 and at that point the credit card company is going to recalculate my balance. They're going to take this number 511.38 and they're going to multiply it times 1.02 times 1 will give them the number back times 0.02 will give 2% interest for that month. And that's going to be my new balance. And I continue. All right, $30 equals. Now, before I do this, this has four decimal places. I don't really want four decimal places. I would like to keep my money with just two decimal places. So something that I can do is select the whole column. And there's these, there's these buttons over here. Say increase, decrease decimal places. If I do this decrease all right I want I want to keep exactly two decimal places and I'm gonna do the same thing for column D something else to remember from this is if instead of typing my numbers I use variables in my formula it makes my life easier I can say equals and instead of typing the numbers I'm gonna click this box B3 minus C3, enter. Okay, it did the same subtraction for me, but this time my formula is saying take the box from column B, subtract the box from column C. I'm going to do the same thing down here. Equals, and instead of typing this number, I'm going to click this number, equals the box that is one row above me in column D times 1.02. I'm always going to make this $30 payment, so I'm going to copy that, paste it down, 
since that's the plan right now. $30 payments. And I want to say equals this minus this. Enter. Equals this times 1.02. Enter. Equals this minus this. Enter. And remember, because I'm doing the same steps over and over and over again, actually, instead of typing and typing and typing, after I have a row set up, right, this says take the box in column D above, multiply by 1.02. This says subtract the two boxes that come before me, right? I'm going to take this, copy the whole row, and paste it. Paste it. Paste it. Matter of fact, I can just highlight a whole bunch and paste. Now I have my formula done for me and I can watch my balance go down over time. These negative numbers, that means I already paid it off, so I'm going to get rid of them. Uh, it's probably not reasonable that I leave a balance of $1.50. 58 cents so probably in the 21st month instead of paying my $30 minimum I will probably just pay off the bill that means it's taking me 21 months to pay that off that's almost two years I'm taking to pay off the $500 bill how much do I end up actually paying right that's gonna be all these $30 payments added together so overall I end up paying and I'm gonna use another formula that's built into here it's gonna be sum okay they have they have a suggestion right here sum from C2 to C24 that's exactly what I want this is how it would look though if they don't give you a suggestion sum parentheses first number that you want and actually, I only want to go to 23. Last number I want. $661.58. That's the total that I end up paying. How much extra is that? That'll be this number minus the original cost. 120 extra dollars. Right, my item that cost five hundred and forty dollars ended up. I ended up actually paying an extra hundred twenty dollars because I'm making the minimum payment on the credit card each month. And keep in mind, this is just for one item. I didn't. I didn't add in more groceries or gas or other expensive items to this. I'm only tracking one item. Imagine how much extra I'm gonna have to pay. If I'm using the credit card constantly, when I go to restaurants, when I go to the grocery store, when I go to the gas station, constantly using the credit card and I only make the minimum payment a month, I'm going to end up paying this credit card company thousands and thousands and thousands of extra dollars over my lifetime if I just make minimum payments. Right? The way we avoid that is very simple. When you get a credit card for the first time, don't use it unless you plan to pay off the entire bill your first month. Then my balance is zero, and they don't have anything to charge interest on. 2% of zero is still zero. 1.02 times zero is still zero. So I eliminate all these payments. Total cost. 541.38, what it's supposed to be, extra cost, nothing. That is the proper way to handle credit cards. Before I move on, there's going to be one more thing that I want to do with this. I want to take this stuff that's in a table and look at it inside of a graph. So I'm going to look at just month and balance. I'm going to highlight both of these columns all the way down to the end till I have a balance of zero and I'm gonna say insert chart 
Now the default chart is this line graph. There's a bunch of different types of charts that we could we could look at depending on what, what exactly we're looking for. This guy right here, scatter plot, would be uh, more realistic because we're only looking at discrete data. I can change some different stuff about the graph, but for right now, I just I just want you to get a basic scatter plot, be able to get a basic scatter plot of information that you put in the columns in a sheet. So that's this. This is tracking my balance over time. So this is a fairly flat, fairly flat line. If I was to compare this to, uh, if there was no interest, that's a that's an interesting comparison for me. If there was no interest. That red line would be how my payments looked if I was paying $30 a month and there wasn't any interest versus the blue blue stack of dots with interest. So there's a little bit of curve. You, can, you can't really see it, but there's a little bit of curve to the blue line, whereas the red line is perfectly straight. That distance between red and blue represents how much extra is on my balance each month because of the interest payments that I have to make. This is going to be the related problem that I want you to do. Moving a family into millionaire status within one generation without lottery tickets or blessing of amazing athletic or publicly acclaimed and funded entertainment talent. Step one, get a decent education followed up by holding down a decent job. Step two, don't spend everything you make. Step three, max out Roth IRA contributions in an index fund, $6,000 a year. At age 50 and on, $7,000 a year. Let's look at this. Who has an extra $6,000 a year? Get a nice enough job. Maybe you can have an extra $6,000 a year and do exactly this. But even if you don't do it with $6,000, if you have some spare cash, anything, anything helps. This is how you're going to set this up. Very similarly to what I had was credit card balance payment and what what is remaining. You're going to have balance investment instead of payment because you're putting money like kind of sort of into a bank and then total all right calculations will look very similar your balance is starting at zero at age 20 starting at zero you're going to start investing six six thousand dollars you look and look and remember how to do this you're going to add columns b and c to get your total and then to get our new balance we want to take that total from column D, and get that number plus 5% more added to it. So see if you can remember how to use a formula to do that. You're going to go from age 20 up to age 49, and at age 50, you're going to change this investment to $7,000. Okay, so you're going $6,000 up to age 49, and then starting at age 50, you're going to be doing $7,000. And you're going to go all the way to age 65. All right, where am I getting these numbers? 6,000, 7,000. That's the limit. All right, $6,000 is the limit. $7,000 if you're age 50 or older of what you're allowed to contribute to this thing called an IRA. You're going to see how much compounding interest affects the growth of money if you put six thousand in a year from age 20 to 65 just as a a reference point six thousand times 49 minus 20 plus seven thousand times 65 minus 50 is all right so you're putting in about a quarter of a million dollars okay over your lifetime putting in a quarter of a million dollars a little bit more than that let's see what comes out of that investment that's the plan again age 20 to 65 contributes six thousand dollars a year every year gain an extra five percent on the final balance for the year or the total for the year. I'm going to want you to get that chart made. I'm going to want you to see if you can remember how to insert, make a graph of the situation, 
And then I'm going to want you to write three sentences down at the bottom somewhere. Just write three sentences of your thoughts looking at... We're, we're probably going to look at a part two of this, maybe even a part three, four, and five to uh, try to get you to see the, the true power of compounding. But this is just a, this is just a first taste.